Awesome guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, we're gonna look today at a dynamic microphone from Samson that should be really good for gaming, podcasting, live streaming and so on. And to be precise, I'm talking about the vocal microphone Samson Q4, which is still a little bit on the budget side, but shouldn't break the bank. So um, let's quickly have a look at the back. Uh, one thing I immediately noticed, uh, I didn't realize before, it seems to come with an XLR cable, which uh, can be quite useful uh, because a lot of dynamic microphones that I tested in the past, you only get the microphone, you don't get the cable. So if the cable is secluded, you can put potentially save a little bit more there as well. And uh, as you can see, the company claims it has a consistent full vocal range. And uh, yeah, it's also a little bit shock mounted, uh, capsule reduces handling noise. That's also one thing I really, really noticed that if you're a beginner and you want to get into live streaming, that usually no matter which uh, manufacturer, manu manufacturer you ultimately choose, is that these dynamic microphones, my personal opinion is they are just more easy to handle as compared to, let's say a more, much more sensitive and much more pricey uh, uh, condenser microphone because these condenser microphones are usually much more prone to picking up unwanted noises from your surrounding. So let's say you do a podcast or you do a live stream, something like that, and the EMS uh, drives down your road, uh, the condenser microphone, because it uses the 48 volt fan power, is probably gonna pick up more uh, sound from your surroundings. And also the handling noise, let's say you record, you have the microphone on a stand on your table, and your hand for some reason touches the table, that can be picked up by the condenser mic from my experience much more easier than with the dynamic mic. And that's why I usually think these dynamic mics are easier for beginners. So, but uh, obviously it's not a USB mic, so we gotta connect it to some sort of USB audio interface. And I've picked a really also budget friendly, but still very interesting audio interface because it's a USB audio interface with a microphone input, the phantom power, but it has a tube. So that should really create a really, really warm sound when recording uh, your voice. Because uh, one viewer recently asked me, oh, I have one microphone that you tested and I've connected it to some other interface or, or I don't know, and oh, it doesn't sound exactly the same way. Uh, what can I do to get the nice sound that you have? And because usually, uh, usually I always use the Shure SM58, which is just more pricey than one of uh, these other dynamic budget mics. I use this and then I compare it with an even pricier preamp. So not everybody can buy this pricier mic and the pricier preamp. So that's why today I have tried to uh, copy my usual setup that I just showed you uh, just in a little bit more budget uh, way, because this is a tube preamp as well. And this is a dynamic mic as well. I mean, the Shure is a dynamic mic and the Samsung Q4 is a dynamic mic. So uh, let's just uh, test this that way. Uh, that concludes the introductory part. Next up is the unboxing. I'm gonna show you what's inside the package, give you a few close-up shots of the Samsung Q4. And then in part three, the most interesting part, we're gonna run to some sound tests and see uh, what kind of nice warm sound we can create with this mic and this uh, audio interface for your podcasting or live stream. And then in part four, I'm gonna do a little bit of a summary and conclusion and compare the budget setup against my usual a little bit more pricey setup. And I'm really curious to see how budget setup uh, performs against pricey setup. Have I spent too much money or not? So guys, let's get rolling with the unboxing. Uh, I'm excited to have you here. Let's get started. Let's have a quick look at this really, really budget friendly entry level mic. That's what this tutorial is uh, supposed to be about. And uh, as I pointed out earlier, um, this uh, big saving I think that you can get from the Samsung Q4 is that it comes bundled with one of these XLR cables. And uh, that also seems to be quite long. So you shouldn't be, at least in my case, uh, I'm always recording at my desk, so I'm not gonna run out of cable. In fact, that would be for my scenario, even a little bit too long, but uh, the companies, I think they have to strike a balance uh, because if you put that on a big stand, uh, then obviously you wanna have a, a, a little bit longer cable. 
Um, but that's, it's like I said, it's a little bit unusual for a dynamic mic to be uh, delivered with a cable. Uh, most uh, dynamic mics that I tested before, they don't come with a cable. So let's have a closer sh a look at the Samsung Q4. And as you can see, it comes with an on off switch that can be quite handy uh, if you're somewhere on a stage or you're doing an interview or a podcast, you can just uh, switch this on and off. I mean, live stream, you can switch it physically on and off. So you don't uh, transmit some signals accidentally. And yeah, it's an XLR mic. And that's one thing I want to point out that I have seen a lot of people who start out, they tend to gravitate, at least that's my impression, to USB microphones instead of XLR microphones. And uh, yes, uh, on the one hand, it's kind of super uh, easy. You, if you have a USB mic, you just plug in the USB cable and then plug that into your computer and you're ready to go. But the big disadvantage of using a USB mic is simply that you cannot combinate it nearly as well as uh, with an XLR mic. With an XLR mic, you have the incredible flexibility that you can connect it to all sorts of audio gear. A USB mic, I couldn't connect to this kind of preamp. Uh, granted, this is a little bit more pricey a preamp, but uh, if you keep in mind that let's say you get a dynamic microphone, then that with XLR, you can get an entry-level mic and an entry-level USB audio interface. And then, for example, you connect it with a high-quality cable. This is a high-quality cable that I have. It's the, not the included one. It's a summer cable made in Germany. Um, you just connect the budget mic to a budget interface. Maybe at some point you upgrade the mic. You have a, still a second backup mic, but now you have a quality mic. Or you, have the, you keep the budget mic and instead of continuing to use it with the budget interface, you get a more quality interface. So basically it's like plug and play. Cheap mic, cheap interface, cheap mic, expensive interface, uh, expensive interface, uh, cheap mic, or more expensive mic. And obviously you can also put other equipment in the middle. For example, you could have the mic, a preamp, and then an audio interface of your choice. And this flexibility, uh, from my experience, is something I really enjoy. I just really enjoy mix and match, try different combinations. For example, if you had the tube preamp in the middle between your mic and your interface, you could even in the tube preamp, uh, most tube preamps, you can change the tube. So for example, I have this Russian tube. Uh, you could get a Chinese one or European one, doesn't really matter. I think this Russian tube is kind of, uh, I just found that it's funny. Um, yeah, obviously if the signal goes through here, and then an interface, you can create uh, totally different sounds and modify it with different tubes and so on and so forth. And that is something that's just not possible if you're just using a USB mic. Think about it. If it's a USB mic, it has to do the, uh, all the analog to digital conversion directly in the, in the mic and then send it to your computer. It only has very, very uh, tiny space. If I, for example, show you my uh, trusty little Firewire audio interface, do you see how much space is in that interface? It has huge space to put a big chip for audio, uh, analog to digital conversion. Um, there's lots of stuff that uh, uh, fits in here. And even if you think about a cheap audio interface might only have a cheap audio uh, analog to digital converter and an expensive one has a uh, higher, uh, more quality analog to digital converter. And it's not only about the converter that makes the sound, it's also about the other components that are out on the board. So yes, a USB mic is really, really easy to use. And for beginners, it might be totally sufficient, but ultimately XLR rules because it's way more flexible. And also you can uh, mix and match different components. So guys, before I geek out any further, um, there's also a carrying bag for your mic. It's very thin, but um, it's going to do the job. So let's uh, set, go to a test setup. And in a test setup, maybe we try the mic with uh, a, the expensive cable and this cheaper cable that was included. Maybe we're going to hear a sound difference even by switching out the cable. And then we can try different audio interfaces, which have different components and uh, even put a tube preamp in the middle. So that's gonna be really interesting. You have already learned a lot about audio equipment if you never heard about this. So uh, let's jump to the sound test. Let's go to part three and do the listening and you're gonna learn even more. Let's get rolling. So guys, right now we jump to sound test part uh, 3A, uh, as you can see in the navigation. 
and we're testing right now the Samsung Q4 with the little bit more expensive uh, tube preamp that I uh, usually like to use. Um, we're going to switch to the uh, budget one in a minute. Um, I just wanted to start with the more expensive one. And uh, yeah, guys, I'm really super curious how this sounds. Uh, what do you think? The Samsung Q4 had this really uh, long cable included, which I'm not using right now because that would create like this huge uh, cable pile uh, on my desk. So what I did instead, I just connected the Samsung Q4 with a shorter cable to my pre preamp in total we because that because of that in total we use like three components the budget mic and the cable goes to the preamp and then from the preamp the signal gets amplified and goes out into my old firewire interface which i showed you just a second ago i just disassembled the firewire interface and talked a little bit about the how the audio components the different components can affect the sound because the viewer wanted to know how does he get uh, a nice uh, sounding result for his podcasting and live stream and so on. So uh, and to prove that what we're going to do right now, I mean, as you can see, the signal gets uh, amplified here. I had to turn the volume up pretty high, but that's normal with the dynamic microphones. So why don't we jump to sound test part 3B and test the same mic with the budget tube preamp slash uh, usb interface hybrid so that's going to be up next because i'm pretty sure that while the ex uh, more expensive uh, components uh, with this cheap mic uh, create a good sound uh, the budget uh, preamp will do about the same it might, might not sound exactly similar but it will be pretty damn close and that's what we are counting for so let's jump to part 3b and test the budget mic with the budget interface so guys, we are still listening to the Samsung Q4 dynamic microphone. And as you can see uh, in the navigation, I think it's over there, uh, we jumped to sound test uh, 3B and I switched out the interface. Now you, now I'm using two components only, just the mic and this hybrid uh, tube preamp slash USB audio interface, which I think is a really cool invention to have both uh, USB interface and preamp in one, because usually I always have to do deal with uh, the audio interface and the preamp being separate, which uh, on my desk always creates a lot of clutter. And if you just have one device, uh, obviously it stream streamlines it and um, uh, your desk looks a little bit more organized, which uh, I think is always a nice thing. If, the, if things are organized, maybe that gets the creative juices flowing a little bit more if you work in a very nice orderly environment, or maybe that's also just a German mindset. Maybe some people like it chaotic. Um, in any case, uh, you can use this, uh, these preamps or USB audio interfaces uh, with uh, dynamic mics as well as condenser mics. If that would be a condenser mic, I would have to engage the phantom power and uh, because the condenser mic is way more sensitive, I would put it on 11 o'clock position. But since it's a dynamic microphone, uh, obviously there is no condenser uh, um, phantom power. Don't turn it on uh, and instead just uh, I put the input gain higher because it's less sensitive, it's a dynamic. I put it on a four o'clock position, but it still produces a, a pretty good sound. Um, guys, I'm really happy with uh, this solution and it should really address the viewers' questions. How do I get uh, good sounding results for my podcasting or live streaming or something like that uh, with, uh, with uh, budget hardware? I mean, this mic is a budget hardware and the preamp is a budget hardware. The only thing that's not a budget hardware is the cable that I'm using um, because I mean, this it would just be to take too much uh, space up from my desk but uh the included cable should work uh, perfectly fine as well so guys this concludes the sound test of the samsung q4 you have seen that it can produce uh, pretty good results both with a more expensive interface as well as a budget interface and uh something like you see right now uh, for people a budget mic and budget interface that is really one of my secret combinations that you might uh, want to consider uh, when uh, picking a mic uh, audio interface combo for podcasting or live streaming. Um, as you have seen, uh, even, the, even the budget uh, solution produces good results. So let's jump to part four, the summary and conclusion part. So guys, this uh, concludes the product review and sound test of the Samsung Q4 dynamic microphone. Um, in part two, I showed you a few close-up shots of the mic itself. 
And then in part three, we did a, a, a thorough listening test with two different uh, audio uh, pieces of audio gear. Both were a tube uh, preamps. And as you can see, uh, I didn't use that tube, but I used the stock tubes of both of these devices. And to my surprise, the uh, more expensive one and the more affordable one both performed uh, surprisingly well. Uh, with these two audio interfaces. Um, granted, I didn't use the supply cable. That uh, was also a special thing I noticed. Uh, most uh, microphones that I saw, they didn't came uh, with a separate uh, cable, XLR cable. So I used a little bit more high quality cable there. But otherwise, it really goes to show you can work with both interfaces really, really well. And probably even if, even if you don't have the tube preamp, even if you just have a normal USB audio interface, that's also going to work very, very fine except that uh, I'm, I did the tube preamp review because the viewer asked for, uh, I want that uh, nice warm sound. So that's what my recommendation is. Uh, if you want to have a little bit more flexibility or this nice warm sound, um, instead of just taking a USB mic, um, check out these uh, XLR microphones and maybe, uh, just maybe, compare them with some sort of a tube preamp slash hybrid interface. This concludes the review guys of the Samsung Q4. Uh, check out my channel page if you want um, in the audio section because there have uh, lots of other useful reviews about the various uh, dynamic as well as condenser microphones or USB audio interfaces and I also love the mics that I'm using right now to record the sound. So if you want to do product reviews with a camera, obviously you need a lavalier mic, um, not a, a mic like this. And Otherwise, this is more for stationary use at home, let's say podcasting and live streaming. So guys, this concludes this video. I see you as a subscriber and in the next video. Take care. And because you just watched the product review of the Samsung Q4 a dynamic microphone, you may also be interested in uh, having a look at this Yamaha AG03 uh, mixer because that also works as a USB interface, which you could potentially use together with the Samsung Q4. Guys, I'm amazed about how many people have already subscribed to my channel because of the useful content that I provide here. You can subscribe right now as well. I see you in the next video and maybe even in one of my online courses. Take care.